Okay, so in this pack, we're going to look at the idea of proof by induction. <coughs> a good analogy for proof by induction is a line of dominoes falling over. Okay. To be able to um, guarantee that all of the dominoes fall over, obviously we need to make sure that the first domino falls over. Then we need to make sure that if any domino in your line falls over, then the next one must also fall over. That's enough to show that all of the dominoes in your line will fall over because if that, the first one falls over, then you prove that the second one falls over, then if the second one falls over, then you prove that the third one falls over, and so on. These are the steps um, for proof by induction that we're going to work through, and these um, are the same for every proof by induction question. So in this pack, we're going to co cover four different types of proof by induction. The first one is um, sums of series proofs. So the idea is that we first prove that the statement works for n equals 1. This is equivalent to the first domino falls over. We next make our assumption step, so assume that the statement is true for n equals k. So that's picking a random domino in the middle of your um, line and assuming that it falls over. If we can then show that the next one must also fall over if the previous one falls over, then that's enough to draw it all together. You've got to make a conclusion at the end of these, um, and it's worth learning the standard conclusion that's in your pack here, um, because there are specific things that you need to say to get all of them. So for this first question, it's been, um, we've been asked to prove by induction that this sum is equal to n squared. Now this isn't a, um, a question asking you to use the standard formulae, um, because it says proof by induction, we're going to do it this way. The first step is always to consider the case of n equals 1. So I'm going to substitute n equals 1 into the left hand side, which is the sum from r equals 1 up to 1 of 2 r minus 1. This is just equivalent to subbing r is 1 in, and you just get 1. Doing this on the right hand side, substitute in n equals 1 you get n squared equals 1, so the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Tie that up so as left hand side equals right hand side, the statement is true for n equals 1. Next is your assumption step. So we assume that it's true for n equals k, and we just write out the original statement with k instead of n. So all of the r's stay the same, so it's a sum from 1 up to k of 2r minus 1, and that equals k squared, and we're assuming that this is true. Next is to consider n equals k plus 1. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to replace n with k plus 1, and that equals k plus 1 squared. Now, most solutions don't do this bit, but um, I like to do this so that we know what we are aiming to end up with. This is what we're aiming to show is true. I'm just going to start on the left hand side for this one, and I should hopefully end up with the right hand side. Now, each of these proof by inductions has um, kind of a trick to them. The trick for the series ones is to write this as the sum from 1 up to k, and then plus the final term, which you get from substituting in k plus 1 to your nth term formula here. So something into this one. The final term you get from something k plus 1 into that. We're going to take that out and then leave the rest in the sum of 1 up to k. This is useful because this is what we've assumed to be true in our assumption step. So we assumed that this was equal to k squared. So we can replace that with k squared. And now all I've got to do is expand this out, simplify it. And I'm going to factorize this at the end, which is what we were asked, or what we, we said we were aiming to do. This shows that if uh, n equals k is true, um, n equals k plus 1 is also true. So the statement is true for n equals k plus 1. 
finally write out your conclusion at the end. So um, I'm going to put um, if the statement is true for n equals k, then we have shown that it is also true for n equals k plus 1. As it is true for n equals 1, by induction, Upside down A means for all, that's N in Z plus Z plus is both integers. The next example is proving one of the standard formulae from the series pack. So we're going to do the same thing. So we start off by considering N equals 1. So I'm going to substitute N equals 1 into the left hand side. Which is equivalent to just subbing 1 in. Now we just get one. So it into the right hand side, so that's six times one, one plus one, two times one plus one. This is equivalent to saying six times one times two times three, which is also one. As the left hand side equals the right hand side, so the result is true for n equals one. We then assume the statement is true when n equals k, so wherever you've got a k, you replace it with. Sorry, whenever you've got an n, you replace it with a k, leave the r's as they are. So this is 6k, k plus 1, 2k plus 1. We now do the same thing but with k plus 1. So subbing that in, it'll give you k plus 1, k plus 2, 2 times k plus 1, plus 1, uh, which gives you a 6, k plus 1, k plus 2. 2k plus 3. And this is what we are aiming to end up with. Start on the left hand side. The sum from r equals 1 up to k plus 1 of r squared. And use your trick for these ones. So you write this as the sum up to k plus the final term, which you get from substituting k plus 1 into r squared. We can now use the assumption step to replace this with what we assumed to be true. And then plus k plus 1 is square. Now what I don't want to do here is expand this out to get a cubic and then refactorize it. You want to try and factorize it as far as you can first. To be able to factorize out the 1 over 6, I'm going to write a 6 over 6 in front of the k plus 1 squared. Then I can factorize the 1 over 6 out. Both terms also have a k plus 1 in common, so I can factorise that out. The remaining terms are k and 2k plus 1, and there's a 6 and a k plus 1 in the second term. Tidy up that square bracket, so we get 2k squared plus k plus 6k plus 6, which gives you 1 over 6 k plus 1. 2k squared plus 7k plus 6. And that will factorise to give you k plus 2, 2k plus 3, as required. This shows that the statement is true for n equals k plus 1, and then tie it up at the end uh, with your final step. Pause the video now and have a go at this question for you, and I will reveal the answer after you restart the video. So substitute in n equals 1 to show that it works to start off with. Assume that it's true for n equals k. Let's write it out with that. Now consider n equals k plus 1 and split this up into the sum from 1 up to k plus 2 to the k, which you get from subbing k plus 1 into 2, r2 to the r minus 1. Notice that here you've got 2 to the k and 2 to the k, so there are two lots of 2 to the k. 
This is the same as 2 to the 1 times 2 to the k, so you can add those powers and you get the result that you want. And 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1. Finally, sometimes you'll get asked um, about factorial notation. So this is something that you've met in single maths um, from the Bannerman expansion of NCR. Remember, factorial notation is an explanation mark, and like 5 factorial, for example, means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and you stop at 1. Now, a thing to notice about factorials is they're included within each other. So if you look at 6 factorial, it's got 5 factorial included in it. So 6 factorial, you can write 6 times 5 factorial, which is useful sometimes. In general, in terms of n, so here you've got n minus 1 factorial times by the next term in sequence times by the n. This is the same as n factorial. Or equivalently, if you've got n factorial times by the next number in the sequence n plus 1, this is equal to n plus 1 factorial. So we'll use these facts in this question here. First off, consider n equals 1. Substitute into the left hand side. This is the same as subbing in r equals 1. So 1 squared plus 1 times 1 factorial. 1 factorial is 1. 1 squared plus 1 is 2. So you get 2 this time. For the right hand side, subbing n is 1. This is 1 times 2 factorial. 2 factorial is just 2, so we can also get 2, so this is true. So that's the left hand side equals the right hand side. The statement is true. Well, any Next is our assumption step, so we assume it's true for n equals k, and we write it out with a k instead of n. So sum from 1 to k of r squared plus 1 and factorial, and that equals k, k plus 1 factorial. Now we consider the case when n equals k plus 1, so do the same thing, so replace your n with k plus 1. This is what we're aiming to end up with at the end. Just look at the left hand side. So sum from r equals 1 up to k plus 1 of r squared plus 1 times r factorial. I can write as the sum up to k plus the final term, which I get from subbing k plus 1 into my nth term formula. So replacing that r with k plus 1. This is what we assumed to be true. So we assumed that this was equal to k times k plus 1 factorial from before. Now plus this thing here, which I'm going to tidy up a little bit by expanding out that k plus 1 squared. So k squared plus 2k plus 2. Again, we want to factorise this because I noticed they've got some stuff in common. They've got the k plus 1 factorial in common. Things behind the k and all of this. Which I can write as k plus 1 factorial times k squared plus 3k plus 2. This will factorise. Give you k plus 2 and k plus 1. And using what we talked about at the start of the question, k plus 1 factorial times the next term in the sequence k plus 2 is equal to k plus 2 factorial. And this is what we wanted. So we wanted k plus 1 times k plus 2 factorial. I've written it the other way around, but it's exactly the same. Therefore, the statement is true for n equals k plus 1. Tie it all up at the end with your statement. <coughs> so if the statement is true for n equals k, then we have shown that it is true for n equals k plus one. 
also true for n equals 1 by induction is true for all n 